Good morning, good morning. Welcome to our September Lake Travis uh, event, our webinar. We're so excited that everybody is here today. We have an amazing group of people that are going to share information about getting organized, something that's always very, very helpful. But we're so excited that you are here for our Lake Travis senior uh, event. And we have some other events that are gonna be coming up too. And one of them is our Aging Well Expo. We've got an Aging Well Expo and it's going to be on September 27th. And LT Senior Services is presenting it along with Alzheimer's Texas. They are one of our sponsors, our big sponsor. We're so happy that they're participating with us. We have the event in the morning and then we actually, here's our flyer. And then we actually have a job fair in the afternoon. Our job fair is open to folks who are over 50 looking for full-time and part-time jobs. We have a ton of employers who are going to be there. So please share with other people that might be looking for work. Of course, right now there is a shortage of workers and there are lots of employers who are looking for dependable people who will show up and be able to share the experiences that they've had in the past and their jobs. So we're super excited about having the job fair. All of this is going to be at the Lakeway Activity Center. The first event begins at about nine o'clock and we hope that you all will be there. Our webinar series is each month and we've got another webinar coming up in October, November. We take December off in October. We're also doing a shred day and you can go to our website, LT Senior Services, and you can see all of our activities there. Our shred day is free, but we do ask for donations and you can bring as many boxes as you have. We have a big shredding machine there, or actually it's a, a company that brings a van and then they put all the shredding into their um, garbage cans and they take it off site and they shred, but it's a great opportunity to clean up all of the rooms that you might be cleaning after this wonderful seminar that we have here today. LT Senior Services is a nonprofit and our goal is to help seniors and their families who are located located in the Lake Travis School District. I am one of the members. My name is Cindy Cummings and I happen to be a realtor. I work for Realty Austin and I also have an ancillary business called Turnkey Transitions. And we help people who are moving from their homes to uh, senior living communities, uh, smaller homes are being closer to their families. So that's what we offer. We do have over 40 members for LT Senior Services, and there likely are some members here on the call today. What we'd like to do is we'd like the members to introduce themselves and talk about anything exciting going on. So uh, Natalie is our handy dandy right hand person. Natalie, is there anybody who would like to come on and introduce themselves from L LT Senior Services? And it looks like uh, Karen Ballinger. Karen from the library. And then if there are any other members that would like to speak, if you could just raise your hand for me and then we will promote you um, one at a time. Thank you. Excellent. Hey, Karen. Great Hi, to Susie. see you. Hi, How are things How are you going? Guys? Good. How are you guys? Good. We're uh, so thanks. happy to be a partner with you guys. Thank you so much for helping us to get the word out about our events. Uh, we have over 130 people signed up for the event today, and we know that we couldn't do it without our partners, such as the library. So thank you so much, and tell us what's going on at the library. No, thank you for having us. Uh, we certainly appreciate everything you're doing for the community, and I personally need this decluttering seminar, so I'm looking <laughs> forward to it. So uh, yeah, the library is open now. We're really glad to see patrons inside. We thank you very much. We're open basically Monday through Saturday, 10 to 4, and then Wednesdays is our late evening from 5 to 7 p.m. So basically 10 to 4, Monday through Saturday, and then Wednesdays 10 to 7, so all the way until 7. And then the library opened a bookstore. I don't know if you know, um, the room in the back that was the teen room is now full of donated books. And so we'd love, people have been very generous in donating books, which we appreciate very much, and we'd love for people to go and actually buy books so it would balance out how the room is doing, but uh, we appreciate that. And then we're still doing uh, online programs. So we have in um, next Monday, a representative from Brookdale was gonna talk about navigating senior living and it'll also be on Zoom. And then after the Aging Well Info on the 28th, um, on Tuesday on Zoom, if anyone missed the emergency preparedness seminar that the city of Lakeway did, Paul Harvey from the city of Lakeway is also gonna do it online. And we still have online story times and tech coach and lots of Zoom programs just like this. Excellent. Thank you so much, Karen. Thanks for being an avenue for people to keep social and keep doing things together and seeing people and getting out there. We know so social isolation is really terrible for all age groups. So thank you for all that you do. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank yeah. you guys.
Okay, I'm looking for uh, Natalie. Is there anybody else who wants to come on and say hey this morning? Yes, I'm going to bring Ann Maloli in. Oh, excellent. We got people coming in from across the United States of America. And Anne is uh, one of our partners. She has been one of our partners since the very beginning. Actually, she helped to found LT Senior Services along with the good doctor. So welcome, Anne. I can see you are in your hot digs in the Dakotas. I, I am. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm, I love joining this session. And, and uh, yeah, this is going to be an important session for me too, decluttering. So thank you for the opportunity. My name is Anne. Uh, I represent Be Well MD. We are a medical practice specializing in seniors, and Dr. Carlson is our uh, medical director. He is a geriatrician, and we um, do all of our visits in the home. So we are concierge level medical service. Um, everything is done in the home, all primary care visits. We bring as much into the home as we can, lab services, x-ray, um, audiology, whatever other services that do travel into the home, we help coordinate that. So we basically serve as our patient's hub for all um, services that they need, medical, non-medical, um, and we have a lot of patients in the Lake Travis area and would love to um, support others who may need that kind of service. Excellent. It's great to see you. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, without seeing any further members that want to say hello, I think we'll go ahead and introduce our panelists. So let me go ahead and bring in our panelists. We're getting so fancy here. All right, look at all those beautiful ladies. Woohoo, we did it. Welcome, welcome. We're so happy to have all four of you, actually three of you here today, but you do the work of four people, if not more. And what I'd like to do first is introduce each of you and thank you for having your names on there. That helps everybody to know who is who. So first I'll start with Randy Lyman. Randy is the owner of Helping Hand, founded her professional organizing business in 2001. She's a certified professional organizer specializing in chronic disorganization and offers residential hands-on and virtual organizing services to people with with diverse organizing challenges, whether those challenges are mild, moderate, or severe. Randy is a member of ICD, which is the Institute of Challenging Disorganization, where she has been a board member. She's also a member of NAPO, the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals, where she served on the NAPO Austin board. Since 2016, she's been named one of the top home organizers of Austin by expertise.com. And she works closely with mental health professionals as well as local and state agencies. She offers her clients a collaborative approach to creating lasting clutter management. And that is Randy. And you can see her name on there. So, hey, Randy, go ahead and wave. Hey, Cindy. <laughs> Carol, uh, Carol has the beautiful blue background there. Carol Jones of A Jones for Organizing began her business in 2009, and she specializes in closet design, kitchen efficiency, garage organization, and paper management. Carol helps people with decluttering, managing their belongings, and setting up personalized organizing systems in their homes. A Jones for Organizing is one of the expert.com's top home organizers in Austin. And Carol is an active member of NAPO, the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals. I think that's where you all met because you're all members of NAPO. Is that right? Yeah. So Pam, and uh, she has kind of the rust colored, salmon colored background. Um, Pam is a native Texan, Texan. She studied business administration at Texas State University. After college, she worked in the insurance industry, both as a claim supervisor and saleswoman. In 1998, she began her professional organizing business under the names Memories Organized by helping other people organize their photos and creating keepsake scrapbooks. In 2007, Pam added organizing services of other areas of the home, as well as cleaning and renamed her business Brit Lynn Cleaning, which is named after her daughters. I asked her last time. Is that right? Your two daughters combined. Pam's company is now based out of Round Rock and her team of 10 now offers both cleaning and organizing services in the North Austin area, as well as North suburbs. Pam is a member of Association of Residential Cleaning Services International and NAPO. She's a NAPO conference speaker and she's served her local NAPO Austin chapter since 2014 as director of marketing, president and director at large. She's also served at national level on the chapter relations committee as a director of marketing moderator and was named one of the top organizers of Austin by expertise.com. Woo! 
Ladies, you got it going on. We are so excited to have you all three here today. And uh, our format is going to be, we've got a list of questions to ask you. Well, at the same time, we're gonna be monitoring the chat and the question and answer area. So for all of our attendees, if you have any questions, just go ahead and put them in there. We're probably gonna wait until we get through our first round of questions uh, to ask the audience questions, but we really do want to hear what questions you might have. And no question is dumb because somebody else is probably thinking it, right? Okay, so the first is, please share your name, your organization, and your job description as it relates to helping declutter or downsize. And we'll just go ahead and start with you, Randy. Well, Cindy, you pretty much summed it up, baby. I don't know what else to say. Well, um, I've been doing um, my business as a helping hand, and I have been uh, organizing for um, it's over 20 years now, and I help people that are, have mild, moderate, and severe organizing challenges. So that can be anywhere from just a little bit of, of uh, organizing challenge all the way to hoarding. And as Cindy said, I collaborate with local, um, state, and uh, my clients, family, and um, social workers, and therapists, and uh, psychiatrists. So that's what I do. And uh, um, I love doing it. So there you go. That's All right, me. Carol, give us the lowdown. I love the paper organizing that you talk about. That's a big problem for a lot of people. Uh oh, you're on mute. <laughs> the universal yeah. symbol. Paper organizing is a challenge for almost everyone. Uh -oh. uh, like you said, my company is a Jones for organizing. I've been doing this since 2009. And um, I love doing space design and closet design, but I uh, also help people with paper. And Pam? Awesome. So yes, I started out helping people organize their photos, their keepsakes, their memorabilia, and still do that today. Um, but we also offer organizing in other areas of the home and added cleaning. So we're kind of a full service um, uh, company, I believe, for the North Austin and North Suburbs. Excellent. Well, let's go on to the next question. And um, Pam, we'll go ahead and start with you first. So let's say that somebody is super excited about getting started on the decluttering process and they want to do it on their own. What are some of the areas they may start with? So what I find is a lot of people tend to put off mail, and I know there's another question that may handle this as well, but having a good system um, in place to handle that mail coming in um, is a, a great place to start. Um, but I also ask them, you know, what areas are bothering you most? And we try to, to, to guide them to that area that's really bugging them, because if they, can, if they can see progress in that area that's really bugging them, uh, then they're inspired and motivated to either continue on their own or have us back to help more. It's kind of human nature, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So do you uh, recommend not starting with the toughest area, just starting in the area that is just bothering you the most? Yeah, the one that's bothering them. Sometimes that's the toughest and we might have to break that into chunks and in different days um, to get that done because it may not be able to be done in one day. And what I find is a lot of people just, they feel like we're one of those TV shows, right? We're gonna send this team of 10 people in and they're gonna get their whole house, you know, decluttered and put back together in the same day or the same session. And that, that doesn't really happen that way. It takes a lot of time. So we help them map out how long is reasonable to expect it to take. And Pam, it's not because of your help, it's really the person, isn't it? Because it's the person who you get tired, you know, you have to make all those decisions and your brain just gets super, super tired. So you could probably do it all, but it's the person who has to make the decisions that it makes, makes it slow down or makes it maybe not be as quick as they'd like it to be. Carol, what Absolutely. was, yeah, Carol, what's your experience with that? Oh, I was just going to say, uh, I was thinking we were going to start with Randy with this question and then alternate, but. Um, um, this is what I love about this group. No other group helps me get organized in my event as much as my organizers. So actually, I should just like go off and let y'all just go because yeah, you know what you're doing. Ask us you the know. question. Yeah, okay. and we're going to we're going to go in okay. our order there, Cindy. Okay. What okay. are you doing? You went okay. off the tracks. 
<laughs> fire me now. Got if it. you don't mind, Carol, if you just go ahead and answer. <laughs> okay. Um, well, the one thing I would say is just start small. Um, people tend to really get overwhelmed really quickly and really easily when they think about, okay, I'm going to organize my whole garage or my whole kitchen or my whole office or whatever. And it's, it, they're going to get overwhelmed. And the best thing is that I tell my clients is to start really small, start with a junk drawer in the kitchen, right? And work on that. And that's going to get your, your uh, decluttering juices flowing. Hmm. Or you do little spaces like that, the more you can tackle stuff. So don't start with the whole garage, maybe start with one box, just one box. Focus on that box. Don't worry about the rest of it and see what you get done. Uh, I also recommend setting a timer. Uh, there's an app on your phone that you can get on your phone called Time Timer. Uh, and you can set it for like 10 minutes or 15 minutes and then see how you feel and go take a break and do something else and then come back if you want. But setting a timer really makes it like, okay, I'm not going to be doing this for hours. I'm just going to do this for 10 minutes and I can go do something else. Love it. Okay, Randy. <laughs> Are you going to behave? Okay. I'm going to behave. Okay. You totally, you checked me. I, okay. I got the system down now. Okay. Thank you. Um, I want to uh, just uh, talk about just what Carol said about time timer um, and folks that have challenges with ADHD, the time timer is super good. And I talked to them about that because you can actually see the time you actually visually can see the time ticking away. It's red. And so that really keeps people on task. And in my work, I help people with keeping on task. But another thing about um, getting really excited, if a client can't figure where to start, um, I, I say to them, let's go to the front door and let's walk through and act like and think that this is the first time you're seeing your home. So where are the places that are the problem zones? And so that, that works as well. If they really are stuck on, oh my gosh, what's, you know, where do I start? So that is uh, one thing that um, is a, you know, a little thing that I, I do with my clients. And it, it really helps to um, have them see their home with new eyes. Excellent. Okay, we're starting with Pam because I'm, I'm following the system here. Based on your experience, what are some of the challenges or obstacles people face when trying to declutter? We'll go with Pam, then Carol, then Randy. We may have kind of covered that in this last question pretty well, but um, I don't know that I think of anything else to add right now. I think the ladies covered it. Carol, if you have anything to add to that? Well, I always write my <laughs> answers these questions because I will totally forget otherwise. Um, yes, uh, challenges and obstacles that people face um, is overwhelm. Uh, one is analysis paralysis, where you start trying to figure out too many things all at once and it just shuts you down completely. Um, perfectionism. People think that they have to be, if they're going to be organized, they have to do it perfectly. And they don't. There's really no such thing as perfectionism when it comes to anything, really, uh, but especially managing your home. It, it, you're, you're not living in a Pinterest magazine or, or a Pinterest uh, photo. Nobody can achieve perfection, and that shouldn't be the goal. Randy, did you? Should I ask the question? Sorry about that. I'm trying to. Un You're muted. I can't hear you. You're muted. Okay. So um, another thing in regards to um, challenges or obstacles people face when trying to declutter. Um, uh, what if I throw something out that I might need? So people think that their, their possessions have an inherent um, value to them. So 
that could be a problem. Oh my gosh, you know, I spent a lot of money on this. And so if I throw it out, I'm throwing out, you know, the value of it. But you know what? It's we've it's done its job, you know, let's let it go and thank it. Let's thank it for what it did. Okay. Um, these pair of pants, I've worn them for a long time. Thank you very much. You know, that might sound a little, you know, but just, you know, let, let it go. And, uh, and we talk about, you know, one in one out, but I don't know about that. For me, it's one out and nothing in except um, things that are consumable. So um, that would be um, my answer to that question. What happened? Okay. Cindy, um, Cindy froze. If um, Randy, do you mind going on to the next question? I apologize. No. Okay. Thank you. Um, what are some of the long-term physical benefits to decluttering? Um, and so Carol, my darling, answer that question. Uh, the long-term physical benefits to decluttering. Um, so Randy and Pam can speak very well to this, but uh, with their uh, respective specialties. Uh, but I will say, as someone who loves to clean out garages, uh, tripping. <laughs> I see so many garages where there's so many things on the floor uh, and people are always rushing in, rushing out when they're going from the garage to the house, the house to the garage. And it's really important to get things up off of the floor uh, because you don't want to trip on your way to your important appointment or whatever. Um, um, one other one is there's an acronym called CHAOS C-H-A-O-S, and it stands for can't have anyone over syndrome, which is a funny way to put it. Uh, but a lot of people would like to be able to have their friends over, or their neighbors over, and they're, they're maybe a little embarrassed about their house, how their house looks. Uh, so a, a benefit of that is being able to welcome people into your house without, um, without self-consciousness. Um, with the work that I do, um, especially when I'm working with people with a hoarding disorder, um, it, it really, and people that are chronically disorganized, one thing is trip and fall. And as Carol said, I mean, it's really important though, that people are able, especially people with a hoarding disorder, they need to be able to get out of their homes. They need, <clears throat> excuse me, to be able to get out of their windows and get out of their doors. <clears throat> they need to have 36 inches um, of a space for their a gurney to get through um, if there is an emergency. And I've had clients where um, they, they can't get out and um, it might be because of something that happened to them, um, it, nor, you know, um, for whatever their psychological situation has been in the past. And they've, um, I had one client that was fearful that somebody was gonna get through the door um, to hurt the, this gal. And so she barricaded herself in. So she could only open the door a little tiny crack. So it, it's a health and safety challenge. And, uh, and, and that's one thing that I talk to my clients about. Can you get out? Can you sleep in your bed? Can you use your facilities? Can you, you know, can you use your, your kitchen or your bathroom? So that's some of the long-term physical benefits of being able to live in your home safely. And it's about management. Um, more than it is about, oh, organizing. It's not about organizing because especially with a person with a hoarding disorder, they, it's a mental health you know, problem. It's not an organizing problem. So let's work on the mental health issue and then I'll come in and work with them collaboratively on the, the organizing. And for me with cleaning, uh, if you have somebody that cleans your house, it's much easier for them to clean if things are picked up and consolidated. If you have a bathroom counter full of bottles of, of you know, deodorants and perfumes and makeup and whatever, it's really hard for your cleaning company to sanitize properly and clean under all of that. So just or getting organized, putting all of that in a basket in some organized fashion that can easily be moved out of the way or 
put away in a cabinet under the sink or something um, just helps for us to be able to come in and actually disinfect and sanitize the, the home. Okay, do you want me to? <laughs> I'll ask the next question. I'm so. here, I'm here. I just didn't want to interrupt while you were in the middle of it all. Which question are y'all on? We're on five. Number five, okay. What are some of the emotional benefits of decluttering of which I know there are a ton and we're gonna start with you first, Randy. Um, this is a really cool quote and um, it's about possessions and it is every increased possession loads us with new weariness. And so it's so true that, you know, clutter is visual noise. And um, so clearing items from your home that don't serve you helps you feel less stress and anxiety. And I was going to say, you know, that saying, if you're cluttered on the outside, you're probably feeling cluttered on the inside, meaning you can't think properly. You can't think in an organized fashion and you may be struggling to get things done. Uh, you may start in multiple projects and not get a single one finished and then being frustrated. So uh, using an organized fashion to declutter your home and then um, to complete projects one at a time is always the best way. Kara, what do you think? The emotional benefits of decluttering, there are so many, uh, but the ones that come to mind are, um, it, often family harmony, often there's uh, some strife in whoever's living in the house uh, based on whoever they perceive the clutter belongs to. That, that's always an interesting story too. Um, but you can really reduce stress and uh, family strife by decluttering as much as possible. Um, also, Clutter just kind of tugs at you, I, I find, uh, mentally. You know, those papers on the dining room table or all those things on the floor <clears throat> in the garage. Every time you walk by them, you know, there's part of your brain like, <sighs> I have to deal with that, I have to deal with that, but not right now, I can't do it right now. Um, and devoting some time <clears throat> to decluttering those things lets your mind be freer to think about things that make your life better, you know, doing your job, spending time with your family, all of those things. Um, I had a saying, what was it? Oh, if, okay, this is a paraphrase. If you don't control your belongings, they will control you. Mm -hmm. And another one I like is very short and uh, rather serious, but I, I like it. Um, let go or be dragged. <laughs> That's cool. Wow. Okay. That gives you a visual. Okay. Okay. I'll get organized. I'll do it now. <laughs> you know, another, another thing, you know, getting on and, and it was said before is, you know, starting small, but, I, you know, and, and that helps with, um, you know, getting getting these pieces of clutter um, kind of you know put together, and we can you know we can kind of move in a slower fashion. But I'll tell you what, I've been in situations where emotional um, heat has happened between a husband and a wife, where they I'm in the middle where they try to put me, and I always say you know in a round world I can't take sides because. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to get in the middle of the situation. So, you know, that's another aspect of the emotional um, benefits are, you know, I'm going to pull myself out of the situation and give them some strategies of what to do and how to, you know, help each other, not kill each other in that situation. That's great. Where are people, where can people take things that are not considered trash? And Pam, we're going to start with you. And I understand you all have a handout of this. And if you get it to us, what we'll do is when we, we follow up after the event and we uh, point people to our YouTube video and we also include any handouts. So we could include this handout then. Natalie actually has it. Okay, Natalie perfect. Has a word Super. document. Excellent. Okay, Pam, tell us. What are, where are some of the places that we could take things that are not considered trash? 
Okay, great question. So um, there are, and I'm sure these other ladies have more experience in some other areas than I do, but people ask all the time, and somebody asked in the chat, what do we do with our VHS tapes, our videos, our audios? And there are places to convert those to MP3s. I highly recommend that. And then you don't have to keep the originals anymore, your eight millimeter film. Uh, my family had a bunch of that. Um, there are places to outsource that. And my current favorite place is called forever.com. It, it's a website. I am an ambassador through them, so you can contact me and I can help you with this as well. But um, they do a great job converting all of that and then they upload it into a permanent storage account, an online account that you can then download to your computer, make CDs if you want to, um, whatever you want to do to, to disperse that to family members. Um, let's see, one of the other things I like to do is to have clothes that go to a consignment shop if they're of value. Uh, nicer clothes can can be resold at a consignment shop. And now we've got Facebook Marketplace. So um, I sell a lot on Facebook Marketplace. If it's something that's maybe a little nicer than I would normally give away to Goodwill or um, some other, you know, charity like that, and you feel like it's worth some money, or maybe it's even brand new and you never returned it, but it's too late to take it to the store, you can sell it on Facebook Marketplace. And that's a pretty quick, easy way to do it. Pam, what are some safety things that you should look out for if you're using Facebook Marketplace? Because I'm always kind of uh, afraid for my clients to do it on their own. Um, but tell us what some safeguards you have. Okay, and maybe the other ladies have some more too. But here's what, what we do. Um, we usually do a front porch pickup or we'll meet if they're really concerned about doing it. You can meet usually in the parking lot of your local police station. They often will let you do exchanges like that. And so you can feel safe that you're in their parking lot um, if you need to meet the person in person. Um, they can pay you ahead of time through Venmo or Cash App or some other way. And that way they've reserved the item so you know you're gonna get the money. You've gotten the money before they even pick up the item. I've done that before as well. And then all they have to do is pick up the item at, the, at whatever place you're comfortable having them pick up the item. I like the police, uh, going to the police station. I hadn't thought about that, but it couldn't be a safer place, I would think, but. Right. <laughs> uh, so, Carol, what's what's your ideas for that? Well, uh, this I'm sure this is on our list, but uh, one of my favorite things to take uh, craft supplies that you no longer want, uh, yarn, fabric, uh, sewing machines, beads, I mean, stickers, stamps, every kind of craft supplies and office supplies. Some people have, you know, from the old days, they, they'll clean out their office and they still have like five boxes of staples in their office. And who really staples stuff that much anymore? Um, so no, I do, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> I do a little bit, but I don't need five boxes of them. Um, so anyway, you can take all of that to Austin Created Reeves which is a thrift store that resells their donations of office supplies and craft supplies. So like school teachers go there to buy the school supplies that they have to sometimes pay for out of their own pocket, right? So it's called Austin Creative Reuse. And they recently moved to a larger store uh, over on the east side of Austin. Uh, it's not that far. It's a little farther than they used to be, but I, uh, I love taking stuff to them because I tell my clients, you are gonna make someone mm -hmm. happy because this fabric that you're never, probably never gonna use, someone else is gonna see that and go, oh, I love that, you know? So I tell my clients, they're gonna make someone very happy. Well, and um, we just did a blog post about them. Uh, my daughter actually is with the Junior League and they have placements for Junior Leaguers there. So she learned about it through the Junior League. And so then of course I had to go, I took an old sewing machine and fabric and yarn. And then you have to go inside, which is a mistake, you know, because you walk <laughs> in and your eyes are just like, oh, it's beautifully merchandised. Things yeah. are so well-priced. If you're trying to do any kind of arts and crafts for you know, church or for children in a classroom or anything like that, it really does give you goosebumps that you know that your stuff is not going in the garbage. And it was full of people shopping, full of people shopping. So and that's my new fave. Yeah. They're so organized. They, they are. are. 
yeah. volunteer team of people who, you know, they constantly get the stream of donations in. And so they are constantly organizing. And so you walk in there and it does not look chaotic like you would think. It's, no, it's very easy to shop. They make yeah. it very easy to buy. Yeah. Okay. What do you got, Randy? Well, <clears throat> I'm a pet lover. I love my Louis line that he's here in my office right now. He's always in my office. And um, I just got him a new bed. And so I have this beautiful bed, um, but he deserves a new bed. And so um, and, and there's a couple of other things that I bought for him because he deserves them. And so I'm going to be bringing his, the things that I don't, you know, he doesn't want and mommy bought new things. And I'm going to bring them to Austin Pets Alive. And they really, really appreciate it. And, you know, there's so many things that you can bring over there, you know, um, carriers and towels and blankets and I, you know, collars and, you know, for dogs and cats, anything, you know, a lot of people foster animals. And so they really appreciate that anything that you can bring. And so I really love to bring things there. So, you know, that's a place that's, you know, near and dear to my heart because um, I really, I love animals and I love to see that people that are fostering or people that are adopting, they have an opportunity, especially if they can't afford these things um, to, to take them. And I like to wash things when I bring them to them. You know, I don't want to bring, you know, something smelly or, you know, so that's what I do. Um, and a lot of my clients, oh my gosh, almost every client that I have has a dog or a cat and which I love and uh, they love me. I don't know why, but they love me. And they also, um, I always suggest it. And um, they really like that too, that they can take their, animals uh, possessions over you know if they don't want any more over to Austin Pets Alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah it's interesting you got to remember about the towels too because they constantly need towels and blankets mm -hmm. and then when it gets cold they need blankets too so mm -hmm. don't throw anything away we're going to have a great list for you and you'll be able to um, get your stuff into the hands of people who really need it. Uh, let's see our next question is what suggestions do you have for someone that can't decide whether to keep donate or sell sentimental belongings? We're going to start with you, Carol. Well, I think all three of us probably give our clients this advice, um, but uh, <clears throat> I tell people to take pictures of things, um, especially like, you know, when your kids are in school and they're generating all this artwork and you feel like you have to keep it all. Mm -hmm. There's ways to manage that, but one way is to take pictures and label them. If, <laughs> I will add that it's very important to label those photos so that you can find them later, right? If you just take a bunch of pictures and don't label them, that doesn't do you any good, but that's another story. Uh, but take pictures, like this sounds silly, but I have pictures of old clothes that I wore in my 20s, which was, you know, a little while ago. Um, and I can look at those pictures and think, oh, I remember who I was dating at the time and where I was working at the time and where we all used to go and things we did. I can look at a photograph of those clothes and a flood of memories come back, right? So um, it really helps. Excellent. And so we're going to go to uh, Randy next. Is that right? Yeah. Um, I have a very good friend um, that's, uh, her name is Rosalie and she's 94 years old. And I was just talking to her yesterday and she's got a home filled. She lives in New Jersey. That's where I'm from. And she has a home filled with things because she's an artist and she's kept things for, I decades and decades, right? So she said to me, you know, that um, her possessions are the story of her life. And uh, she, uh, you know, she doesn't know what to get rid of. So, you know, are our possessions the story of our life? Yes, they, they are. But do, you know, what do we do with that story? You know, are these possessions so, so important that, you know, they, help us drown in, in them. And, uh, you know, it's very, very hard for her. It's breaking her heart to, 
to give up these possessions. But, you know, like Carol said, you know, take pictures of them. Um, you know, she wants to, she wants to mail, she loves to mail things out to all of us. And uh, she's mailed, she's created over the years, these beautiful cards for me and, and all these other gals that she loves. And they're absolutely beautiful. And I don't send them to people. I, I keep these cards and one day I'll send them, but these are the things of Rosalie that she's given to us. And they're given to us with Rosalie's love. And um, these are the possessions of my life. And uh, I will I will send them on to somebody else that I love, but you know, uh, they are my possessions. But one day, as I said, I have to free them because I, I want that freedom myself, so. Yeah. Pam, how do you wanna chime in? Okay, so um, think about when you use the item last. Most things can be rebought in a few years when you're ready to use them again if you haven't used them in the last year. Um, I know we tend to hang on to things because we think, oh, I might need that one day, but if it is replaceable, considering consider let, letting it go. Um, and like I said, maybe resell it if it's still a, you know, pretty good condition and then buy it back again, maybe used when you need it again. That's one option. Um, I know it's hard though, when you've had parents or people that have passed that, and that they gave you something, and maybe this is something that you don't need or, or want, but you have a hard time letting go of it, um, because that person gave it to you. And so, um, like Carol mentioned, taking pictures and then letting go. And, and as organizers, we're not going to make you let go of stuff that you don't, that you're not ready to, or for whatever reason you need to hang on to it. So don't fear that, that if you hire an organizer or work with us, that we're going to force you to get rid of, rid of things. Um, but we are going to, you know, just ask you a few questions to help you determine whether or not it's time to let go. Great. It sounds like you probably go through a process with them. If they're kind of struggling, you ask them some more questions yeah. that help them to think a little further, you know, that makes them determine if yes, they're ready to, let's, let's say an example of a piece of heirloom jewelry. I know a lot of people feel like, go ahead and give it away now to the person, you know, that you want to have when you pass so that you can see them enjoying it now. So there's some benefits you're giving away now so you can enjoy it, but then it's also not in your possession. So it's not kind of holding you down, I guess. Um, yes. Can I add one more thing? Yes, absolutely. I think all three of us would agree with this. Uh, sometimes people feel like they need to hang on to something sentimental because their Aunt Mildred gave it to them and they love their Aunt Mildred, right? Right. But that vase or that painting or whatever it is, that's not Aunt Mildred. Mm -hmm. You take a picture of it if that works for you and let it go to someone else who will enjoy it because maybe you don't like it that much. You love Aunt Mildred, but you didn't always love her taste, right? Um, if you let it go, <clears throat> you're not letting go of your beloved family member. You're just letting go of the object and it's not them. What you have of them is your memories of them, right? So, so we all, I think all three of us, sort of do some variation of, I, as your professional organizer, <clears throat> give you official permission to let that item go. Mm. And you're not dismissing your Aunt Miller. Good point. Um, Cindy, another thing that I would like to add is um, I always um, have a marinade box that I say to my clients, let's just marinate um, you know, you don't have to make a quick decision. You know, once it's gone, you know, you let it go, it's gone. So just sit with it for a little bit. And, you know, once you've decided, okay, then it can go. But if you feel uncomfortable, just put it in the marinade box and let it just marinate. Mm -hmm. Kind of think on it. Uh, what recommendations do you have for parents that want to pass down their family heirlooms to their adult children who typically say, I don't want it, right? Well, um, my dad just passed away and um, he didn't do that with my brothers and I. He didn't, you know, 
he didn't say, we didn't have that conversation. And thankfully, you know, my brothers and I decided that we were giving everything to charity. And we only took a very little bit and my sister-in-law's as well. Um, so it worked out beautifully. So we gave to a neighbor and we gave to charity. But I always say to my clients, you know, ask your children what they want, but, you know, way before uh, you pass, you know, put a little sticker underneath, you know, your piece of furniture or whatever little thing you can do to, uh, to notate that this is, you know, something that so-and-so said to you because, oh my gosh, it could become a war. I've seen it happen and it could divide a family. And so belongings are not worth a family divided. Agreed. Very true. And one of the tips that I have, you guys, relates to my photos and um, that side of things. So I've got a couple of ideas here for you. Um, when you have family recipes, for example, you could put them in a bound book. And what I like about this is you can even scan in the, the actual handwriting of the person, put them with family photos as well. And not only does it become a heritage book, but it's also useful because it's got the recipes and the memories in it. Um, so that's one way that, that you could pass things on to your children. And it's, I like these because they're so small and condensed, right? They don't take up, they're, they're not like a big scrapbook that takes up a bunch of space. So the chances are greater that people will hang on to the memories if they're compact form and in an organized, presentable way. Um, for As far as family like heritage, you can put that in a book as well and do a bunch of journaling. Let's see if I can do this. Um, as well as the photos. So telling the stories behind either. But, and you can do this with items too. The, the things before you disperse of them, um, you can actually take the pictures and then just document or journal where that item came from and, and the special meaning behind it. And sometimes that helps people to be able to let go if they just have some sort of documentation and story behind it that's recorded. Great. Carol, do you have any anything that you wanted to add to that? Well, um, I will just uh, reiterate because I, I think Randy said this, um, or, or you said this, Cindy. Um, the, the reality is that uh, your kids don't want your furniture and they don't want your china and your crystal. They, they just don't. I know it's beautiful. It is beautiful and they should want it, but they don't. Um, and so part of it is just coming to grips with that idea. Uh, we live in central Texas where there was a large German immigrant community around the turn of the century, uh, the 1900s and so. And so some of my clients, you know, have this incredibly beautiful, ornate, carved furniture, just gorgeous stuff. And it's, it was handmade in Germany, you know, some of it. And it, it's, it's so hard to just come around to the realization that times have changed and the world has changed and the kids want more modern stuff. And there's just, there's not a lot of market. Uh, it's really hard to sell China. It's really hard to sell crystal. It can be done, uh, but it's very time consuming and might not, might not be worth it. Uh, what was the other thing I was gonna say about that? Oh, uh, the other thing I was gonna say was Give them stuff now. Don't wait until after you're dead. While you're still alive, uh, they call this Swedish death cleaning. Mm -hmm. The whole idea is to yep. ask your kids what they want now. Write it down or just get it to them. Uh, start cleaning out your house now. And your kids will be um, very um, grateful. They don't have to do all of that after you're gone. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, when you walk into your home each day, mail is piled up all over the place. What are some tips for handling mail? This is a great question. Okay. And Pam, we're going to start with you. <laughs> so the best thing you can do is handle it right away. Handle it when you bring it in the door. However, if you get distracted, you get a phone call, you've got to make dinner or whatever, and um, you need to deal with that later. 
then I like to have a recycle bin handy, a trash can handy, because gosh, we have a lot of junk mail that comes in. And I know Carol has a suggestion on how to get rid of some of this junk mail. I'll let her tell you about, and I think it's on our handout. But anyway, um, so that it doesn't come into the door to begin with. Um, but sort those things in, into stacks of, of things that you need to deal with. Like, and you can have a vertical file folder to put like items to pay if you're still getting did, um, if you're still getting paper bills and that's your, you know, cup of tea and you don't want to get the digital version only or do it on auto pay and you still want those physical paper copies because some people do, then at least have a file folder that you can put called to pay, meaning a bill that you need to pay or something I need to call about, put it in a to call folder or to write if you need to write back to somebody about something, or even if you get an invitation in the mail for a wedding or a bridal shower or something where you need to buy something, buy a gift for a graduation, put it in a to buy folder, that invitation. And then you'll know where those items are when you're ready to deal with that and then deal with it on a regular basis. It's dangerous to create a to file folder because the to file folder can get so big and overflow. Um, <laughs> So, you know, try really hard to get in the habit of filing on a regular basis the things that you do need to keep or scan in a digital format um, if you don't need to keep the paper copy. Great. Okay, I think we're going to move now to Carol. Okay, so I talk about this all the time, <clears throat> uh, but with some of my clients, it's made an enormous difference in the volume, the mountain of mail that they get. <clears throat> and it's a way to turn off credit card solicitations and loan solicitations. Uh, some people have just accidentally gotten signed up for them and they get tons of this stuff. If you still get tons of credit card solicitations, you want to turn those off because um, uh, thieves could use them for identity theft so you want to stop them from coming into your home in the first place, right? Instead of just letting them come and throwing them away in the trash, stop them from coming. And the way to do that is a website run by the credit reporting agencies, and it's called Opt Out Pre Screen. I'm sure it's on our list. Uh, Opt Out Pre Screen. O P T O U T P R E Screen.com. It's very safe. I am here to tell you that it is perfectly safe. You have to give them all your information. You have to give them your social security number. And that makes some people nervous, but they have to have all that information so that they can be sure that it's connected to you, you your account. Um, and it really stops. I had one client who just had big Rubbermaid bins full of junk mail. <laughs> And now it has dwindled to a trickle. Mm -hmm. There's some junk mail you can't turn off, uh, but you really want to get rid of those credit card solicitations because you don't want those coming in. Uh, you can also turn off catalogs if you want at catalogchoice.org, catalogchoice.org. Uh, and you can pick individual catalogs, say you like some of your catalogs, but you want to turn some of them off, you can turn individual ones off for free. Opt-out pre-screen is also free. If somebody tells you that they can turn off your credit card solicitations, but you have to pay them a fee, that's a scam. Prescreen.com is not a scam. It's free and it's safe. Uh, catalog choice is free too. Well, after one of these seminars, I did that and I was shocked at how much less mail I got, but you're right. You can't turn off everything. I think it's postal delivery, a certain way that they do a routing. And so sometimes I'll still get other stuff, but it's freeing to not have to go through all of that. And yeah. it is a little scary putting in your personal information, but I was like, Carol said, it's okay. So I'm doing it. So I, I am here to guarantee you that it's safe. It is. Okay. So for direct marketing, um, there's a cup book. Well, first, let me tell you, it costs $2 for 10 years, okay, so it's, it's pretty good, okay. So um, it's for direct marketing and it's um, direct marketing, um, where is my direct marketing? Um, Directmarketing.org and um, there's also 
for um, tele it's for telephone and for um, email. They oh, all, wow. They also have it for the services also for people that are deceased. And they also have a do not contact for caregivers. So um, I, th I thought that was uh, really, really cool. And um, so it is, again, it's um, directmarketing.org. And um, it is, it's really wonderful. Two bucks, 10 years. Love it. All great ideas. Thanks, everybody. So um, what are some record retention guidelines? And we're going to start with Carol first. So um, you, um, so the very first thing I would say is that if you have a financial planner or a tax preparer, uh, generally you want to follow their advice because everybody's different. Uh, and it's hard to say that this rule of time applies to everyone because it, it just doesn't. You can also go to irs.gov, irs.com, irs.gov, and they have record retention guidelines. Um, they will, uh, IRS will tell you that uh, like tax returns and uh, the paperwork associated with your tax returns needs to be kept uh, at least three years, right? Uh, sometimes seven years, and it just depends on your circumstances. Um, they also have what I find amusing, but is not a joke at all. But it sounds like a joke on their website, but it's not. Uh, that if you file a fraudulent tax return, that you need to keep those documents indefinitely. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sure there are lawyers somewhere <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, besides tax returns, I would say, you know, uh, keep uh, your marriage certificates, death certificates, birth certificates, love letters, keep those love letters, keep anything like, you know, letters from your mom or whatever. Uh, I would say if, if those make you smile, you should keep them forever right? Um, but you don't need to keep all your receipts, all your insurance policy statements. Um, I like to scan things. Uh, I have all of my bank statements online, and then I download them onto my computer so I can look at them anytime. Um, uh, but if you still get all of that stuff in the mail, there's ways to scan it. Uh, there's ways to turn it off with your bank and tell them to stop sending it to you. Uh, things like that. I use Dropbox. Uh, I, I pay for storage uh, so that I have enough storage on Dropbox. So I have my bank statements going back for years. So I can go back and look at stuff, but it's not a big pile of paper that's taking up room in my office. Randy, what do you want to add to that? Oh, first I want to add that um, I gave you the wrong um, Website for direct mail. Oops. Um, I, I don't know why I put it on here. But anyway, um, it's dmachoice.org. All right, not the other one. dmachoice.org. Okay, so that's direct mail. Um, you know what, what Carol said about love letters? Oh my gosh. Um, while I was while we were cleaning out dad's house. I found a letter that I had written to my brother, to my baby brother in 1976. And I was like, holy mackerel, my dad kept that. And it was wonderful. And so I brought that home and um, that's a, a retention guide right there, baby. I mean, <laughs> but you know, I have a box that um, I, well, two boxes actually that I keep in my uh, master closet that are really beautiful boxes that have, um, letters in them and um, cards in them from my mom, from my grandparents and, and all this, all these beautiful things. But it's two boxes and they're beautiful. And every time I walk in there, if I look up, there they are and they're love and they're them. And now I put my brother's letter in there. And, you know, when I look up, I, I get there such positive and loving feelings. You know, it's pretty, it's them. As I said, I keep saying this and, um, 
you know, it's, that's one of my things that I keep, but I keep it small, you know, so, so keep it small, you know, don't, you know, whatever you're doing digitally, um, if you're uncomfortable with that, you know, if you're keeping a file, keep it for a certain amount of time. And when you, when you get your, your, um, you know, your bill, throw the next one or, or, um, um, I'm looking at my, um, what you call it? Well, what we, uh, your bill organizer. No, what we, what we get rid of our paper with when we, um, uh, and it, it, oh, oh. <laughs> shredder. shredder. I, I'm sorry. I couldn't think of it. Um, yeah, put it in the shredder. We don't need to keep our utility bills. I mean, what, I tell my clients what somebody's going to pay your utility bills. What, I mean, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, also our address. Oh my gosh. I have clients. They, they're doing this with their address. They're doing that with their address. Anybody can get our address. I mean, really, what are they going to do? Come and visit? I mean, you know, hello, I'm here for dinner. So yeah, really, <laughs> but if you're uncomfortable, um, Container Store has a stamp that you could use to, to get, you know, to stamp it. Um, so you, I respect and honor your feelings of, of being uncomfortable. And I'm, I'm, I joke, but I mean, I really do respect and honor how you feel about what works best for you. So there you go. And the only thing I have to add is this is a scan snap scanner um, that we use to scan paperwork. And so this, if you don't have something, this is portable. Uh, I think this is kind of the medium one that they have. I think they have one that's a little smaller and this one's several years old now, but um, this makes a really good scanner for any of the paperwork that you do need to digitize and keep. I didn't do receipts, little receipts to go through them pretty easy. Yes. Yeah. That's, yes, that's it can good. scan photos as well, but it's not going to be as good a quality image, probably for photograph. Um, so you're probably better off using a slightly better sc scanner for those. But for papers and documents, absolutely, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, we went through a whole process. I had um, somebody help me scan a whole bunch of file cabinets for me. And so now it's all, uh, I use Google. Um, that's where all my documents are. But boy, yeah. is that freeing to not have three big, huge file cabinets. I'm down to one, but I'd sure like to get down even further. Well, Who do I call well, Cindy, if you three? Well, What's that? Cindy, I thought of something else. Um, yeah, earlier yeah, yeah. when we were talking about photos and memorabilia and things like that, I forgot to mention, there's actually a company where you can send off all of your child's artwork or memorabilia like that. Um, it's a little pricey. I mean, we do it also in the Austin area, but uh, where we can scan all of these precious keepsakes and create a digital book, like I was holding up earlier, of the artwork of the child. And so that's one way if somebody really wants to keep a record of that um, for grandchildren, children, whoever, um, into the future and consolidate it, then the, the original artwork can go off to Artwork Heaven and you just have this little book. I love it. All right, so our next question is, what are some of the paperwork challenges your clients experience? Paperwork challenges. <laughs> and we're gonna start with Randy. Oh my gosh. I'm um, the hate to file. And um, so the fear of what if I need that again? You know, yeah. so, you know that's, that is like, we're, we're dragging that um, through our, you know, our history. Um, my parents kept every piece of paper. I was, you know, raised with that to keep every piece of paper. And, you know, we were talking about it before, but, you know, Pam just talked about it. Carol just talked about it with scanning. Um, you know, so we have clients that are afraid of doing that and, you know, they're uncomfortable with scanning or so, you know, just talking about some of the options that our, our clients can use and what do they feel comfortable with? And so that is, you know, one of our challenges that we have. Pam? It muted myself. Sorry about that. No worries. Um, the other thing is what I find is sometimes people are afraid to open their mail because it might be bad news. And so they procrastinate and put it off like, oh, I don't want to look at that right now. Let me put it aside. Um, obviously, that has some, you know, <laughs> some maybe bad results in the end, especially if it's a letter from the IRS that you really need to open or something you need to deal with or a bill you need to pay that you've been putting off or whatever. Um, and so I, I know that can be very hard and especially if, you, if somebody's have, going through an emotional or traumatic period in their life. 
And so maybe having somebody help them with that, whether it's an assistant, a family member, a friend that's close, um, that can help you tackle that rather than, you know, just sticking the head in the sand kind of a thing and hoping it goes away. Um, but that's one of the biggest challenges I find with clients. How about you, Carol? Oh, that is so true. I've had clients like that too, who are just, they really don't want to open their mail because it's going to be a bill or some other bad news that it's just going to ruin their day. Um, so uh, we haven't really talked about time management, but time management is sort of integrated in with being organized uh, because, especially with mail and paperwork, <clears throat> if you are able to set an appointment with yourself to do something that you really don't want to do, like, I don't want to have to go clean my bathrooms, but I've got to do it. And I have set an appointment for myself to do it. I'm going to spend 15 minutes on it, and then I'm going to be done, and then I'm going to go do something else that I'd rather do. And paperwork is the same way. So if you're accumulating a whole bunch of paperwork and you know that, you know, it's time consuming because think about it this way. Every piece of paper represents a decision. Mm -hmm. It's not like tossing out shoes you don't wear anymore. Every piece of paper you have to think about and make a decision, and it's, it's extremely time consuming. And most people don't enjoy it. So if you can set a timer, like that time timer app we were talking about, for 15 minutes, tackle that pile. You don't have to finish that pile. You just have to do it for 15 minutes, once a week, or twice a week, or every day, whatever, whatever works for you. Uh, I promise you, that if you commit to doing that, and then after that 15 minutes, you can go do something else more fun. If you do that on a regular basis, you're gonna get a handle on your paperwork. You're gonna be able to manage it better. You're not gonna dread it so much like you dread it now. Um, it's just a matter of taking a little bite out of the elephant, so to speak making an appointment with yourself, just like you make an appointment with your dentist or whatever, make an appointment that I'm gonna do this for 15 minutes and see how far I get. And then after that 15 minutes, you might be like, well, that wasn't so bad. Maybe I'll just keep going, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, you might get that energy behind you and you're like, well, I'm here now and I feel like doing it and I can concentrate, my mind is focused. Let's go, let's do yeah. more. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you just um, set yourself little goals like that, you can take a big elephant, make a bunch of bites out of it over time, and you'll get to the point where it's not this thing tugging at you, tugging at your mind all the time. That just weighs on you. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're at the fun part where I'm going to ask each of you a interesting situation you've experienced in your client's work. And so Pam, we're going to start with you and then Carol and then Randy. And then um, I'm going to be looking, I've got a list of questions to ask y'all. Um, so I think with, with me and working with people's memories and photographs, there have been, certainly been some very emotional and traumatic, and it can be traumatic for people if they've had some some bad things, maybe a divorce, a bad um, custody battle or something to relive that. And so we're, we try to be real sensitive to that. But um, the first time that happened, I didn't know how to handle it. I was kind of taken off guard. I didn't, I didn't realize that was coming. And the lady just got very emotional and she said, I need to take a break. And I thought, gosh, I don't know if I should leave. I don't know if I should end the session. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. Um, so now I know to expect that. I know that those issues can come up and I just try to take their lead. And if they're ready to end the session that day because it's just gotten to be too much to deal with at that moment, then that's what we do. All right, we're gonna go to Carol next. Um, well, one of my favorite memories that um, has happened a lot, but this one was such a classic example. Uh, my client and I were cleaning out one of our spare bedroom closets. And it's one of those closets where there's shelves way up high. 
back in the corner, it was a walk-in closet. And there was stuff up there she hadn't seen in a really long time. And we started at the front and moved our way to the back and it, it took a while. And we finally got to that back upper corner in this walk-in closet and we pulled everything down and started looking at it. And she shrieked. She was so astonished. She found a piece of baby memorabilia that she had been looking for for years. And her grown daughter had been looking for it in her own house for years. They had torn their house, both of their houses apart and thought, well, one of us accidentally threw it away. Uh, we can't find it anyway. And so she found it. She instantly called her, her daughter and was like, guess what I found? It was such a great moment because, you know, the memorability didn't mean anything to me, but it meant everything to them. Mm. Uh, and I just love moments like that. That's great. Randy, are you going to have a happy story or a crazy story? Which will it be? <laughs> well, I have a picture. I'm not sure if I should show it. <clears throat> I have a oh, no. I have, well, I, I have a quick one. I just, this recently, before I went back to uh, New Jersey to help my family, I found my client's teeth. Her uppers. <laughs> she was looking for her for like so long and she was like, oh my gosh, you know, she couldn't uh, eat her food properly. And so, oh, that's shoot. Just, so, well, so I that's, bet she was happy. That was a big savings. That was a, that was a huge find. So that's all I'm going to say because I could talk all day. Uh, yes, you could. You all, and I know you have to worry about, you know. I want to give people a chance to ask their questions. Yes, we've got lots of questions. So I'm going to go ahead and start um, up here at the very beginning. Do you recommend removing out or season clothes from your closet until the season changes and it's time to wear them again? Or should I keep all the clothes in the closet? That's a great question. Who wants to take it? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, do you have enough space? And um, you know, I, I recommend that you put the seasonal, you know, if, if you have enough space and you keep them in your closet, keep them further away, you know, so that you have your grab and goes, the ones that you use all and you're wearing all the time for the season, you have them close at hand. So you're grabbing those. Um, so anything that you're not using, you know, or is a season, do you have space up on top so that you can label it, you know, and, and again, put it further back use a ladder, but use it safe. If you can't use a ladder, do you have somebody at home that can help? If you can't use a ladder safely, again, do you have a closet? Another closet. I love it. Okay. Another idea is to join your local buy nothing group, as long as you won't be tempted to get more than you give, but it's a great uh, to know your things are going to people who really want and need them and your life will have a new, um, you'll have a new life with another family. So I use that a lot. So I'll post stuff on there and um, your free stuff and people, it's amazing how grateful they are. They really, really are pleased. I had some travertine, so I had some extra travertine. Travertine's heavy, right? So this travertine was gonna go in my garbage and it was gonna weigh a lot and I was gonna have to pull it down. So I was like, I'm just gonna try to give away this travertine. So I put it on Facebook and somebody had had a flood in their house and they had not been able to find the travertine to do the work, do, you know, to do the replacement work. She was thrilled. So it's really fun, you know, when you have a match like that. Uh, can somebody give hints on, oh, we already talked about um, paperwork and how to do that. Um, where can I recycle teacher school supplies, teacher manuals and leveled readers? Well, I think that's the um, Austin reuse. Don't you think, Carol, that's probably the best place to go? Maybe, maybe um, you can uh, take it there and see what they say. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, check with your local school, your local elementary school. Mm -hmm. I know with Austin Reuse, you have to make an appointment and they're several weeks out. So you, you can't just be like, I'm taking this today. So you have to be organized. But it was good because I had a box and my appointment wasn't for a couple of weeks. So I just kept on adding to it. Yeah. So if you hire one of us, we have a way of getting around their calendar system. And I love it. I love it. It's who you know. Uh, can we accept, access this recording later? Yes, we put it on YouTube. We're so fancy. We have a YouTube channel. You can see all of our past webinars on there too. Uh, we'll also email you the link tomorrow in our follow-up email for how to access it so you don't have to go searching. That's Natalie behind the curtain. 
Natalie, Natalie. <laughs> Uh, what do we do with, with nice furniture and not so nice furniture, sell or consign? This is a huge problem for me as a real estate agent. I hope you guys have some other ideas because it's really, really tough. Any ideas? Everybody's shaking their heads. It's really hard to sell furniture. I oh, you, you how know, how special it is. And you know what? Um, and um, auctions. So if there's a bunch of auctions, there's online auctions. So if it's really, you know, if, if it's really super good um, and you also have to have it appraised, you know, so that's going to cost you money. So if it's, if it's really, I'm talking really super worth getting appraised, um, if it's not, and you, you know, um, right now, because of COVID, I'm not sure right now if, um, Salvation Army and Goodwill is picking up, but the furniture, they're getting real picky. And if they something has a lot of scratches or whatnot, they're not taking it. So sorry, but you might have to call one of the junk companies that we work with. And uh -uh. yeah, I have, I have this problem a lot with buffets, right? Buffet and the hutch. Yeah. Um, and people, they spent $5,000 on these beautiful dining room tables. You cannot get people to come get a buffet and hutch for free. What I had to pay to have it taken to a consignment store where it never sold. And then they just had it donated. I don't know where they donated. I, I hope it's not firewood, but it breaks your heart. Breaks your heart. Yeah. You know, the, the other thing, I'm sorry, Carol, but the other thing about like what we use and I use a company all the time is they'll also donate. So they, they're not just junking, they're donating. Yeah, well. yeah they do. They're really, really, really good. So we have a couple of, of ones and like Carol and um, Pam might also say that I, we have one that's a member, associate member at NAPO, right? At, are they still? Austin Junk Lovers. Yeah. And they're really great about um, recycling too. And um, right. And uh, eco, uh, they're eco-friendly. They're really super good. Yeah, it helps to know that it's not going to just be junked. It breaks your heart. Carol, yeah. what were you going to say? Um, I was going to say back in pre-pandemic days, the settlement home would come out. Uh, if you send them pictures of the furniture and they think they can resell it at their big garage sale that they have every year, they would come out and pick stuff up. I don't know if they're still doing that anymore, but it's worth looking them online. They, uh, they are so jammed with stuff. I, I've called them a number of times. They have no room. So yeah. that's a, there's that's also, a there's also top drawer thrift store on Burnett Road. Um, there's, there's, there's Hope, uh, what's it called? Hope thrift store up on like I-35 and uh, 51st, I think. And so there's places you can take furniture. Uh, it's, it's almost always not worth trying to sell though. Yeah. The thing with um, going to a consignment store, I would not just show up. They're super picky and they're, it's likely they're not going to take what you have. Take pictures in and say, will you take this before right. you do that? And then they're also going to say, I could take it today, but I might get too much stuff. So you have to react really quickly. Right. It's, it's really, it's kind of like the China. I want to buy all the China from all my clients because there's no market for China. It's really depressing. Um, what do we do with our library of scrapbooks that take up so much room? Pam, I want to hear what you have to say because I'm going through this right now. I've been going through it for about five years, though. This is not a new problem. What do you have to so say? We, well, we have a scanner and it's a 12 by 17 flatbed. So we can actually turn those into digital images and then can recreate the, the book, the digital book, if people want those. Um, so I think that is the best way if you feel like that's something that the family would like to have, but maybe they don't need the or don't have space for the thick scrapbook. Um, that's one way to do it. Uh, do you do the whole page? So you're not doing singular, you're not doing singular pictures. You're just scanning the whole page. Right. The whole page as is. And that way they get to preserve the, the manner in which it was originally created. Ah, it's great. Okay. Okay. I, I don't, can you tell me like how much does it cost to scan a page? Is there like a set price or do, is it variable or? Great question. So it's anywhere from one to $2 a page. Um, we prefer the page protectors if they are pay, in a page protector to be off and just given the actual scrapbook pages to scan, um, we can do it for less if, as long as we don't have to go through that extra process. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, we've got lots more questions. I love this. What do you do with Crystal? 
So here's the problem. The people yeah. who are buying stuff right now, like I'm not actively buying because I've been buying stuff my whole life. My house is full of stuff. The people who are buying things for their new homes are millennials or younger people. And they typically do not want crystal, mostly because it has to be washed by hand. <laughs> I mean, that's what I've heard, right? right. So um, you don't have a large market because I already have crystal from my family that's been handed down. And you know, it's just hard because there's no market. And so that's what dictates what the prices are for stuff. So if there's no market, it's not your state sale person. It's not anybody else who's trying to help you get rid of your unwanted items. People just aren't buying them. Okay. When you ask your children what they want and they say, we don't want your collection of dolls, baseball cards, et cetera, but we do want the thousands of dollars that the collection is worth. How do you explain to them how to find the current value, how to sell these items? I'm not ready to sell my collection now and give them the money. She shouldn't do it. I'd be like, I'm not doing that. Forget it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, keep it and enjoy it for now and, and don't worry about later, honestly. If it makes you happy, just hang on to it. Donate it to some pet place or someplace else, somebody who will be, who will love to get it when you pass away. But yeah, definitely enjoy it. Um, thank you for the idea of walking through the front door to see your spaces for the first time. Something else that has worked for me is to take a wide photograph. It really offers a different perspective about how good, bad your spaces look. Also works if you're deciding whether your hairstyle is flattering. <laughs> I love that. Thank you for sharing that. That's a great idea. Zoom does that too. I'm, I'm looking at my yeah. Zoom and I don't know. No, my hair, I'm like, erg. Um, Okay, what cost can a person expect for decluttering? We did have, uh, Pam, you had answered, it, it will vary, you know, based on what's going on, half a day could be about $300, but I know it just depends on, on situation. So thanks for doing that. Uh, for people who do not have other, like kids or grandkids, spouses, siblings, even if we have a will or a trust, is there a recommended personal bookkeeping service to track daily email transactions, emails from businesses to read, et cetera, so it doesn't pile up if out of commission for a while or long-term? Interesting. Is there a recommended personal bookkeeper service? Oh, do you guys know anybody who does bookkeeping? I guess maybe well, is the you know, I would I would what first comes to mind is a CPA. Carol, does that sound right? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of different things in that question. I don't know. That question's pretty yeah. there's, well, there's CPA. There's Sorry. a virtual, virtual organizer, C uh, mm, not a virtual yeah. organizer, a what's that? A bookkeeper. Yeah, a bookkeeper and um, or a CPA. Assistant. Yeah. So would they go to yeah. NAPO? Would they go to NAPO and would they search for um, financial organizing? Yeah, we, no. definitely. We have, what am I saying? They're, well, you know, I, CPA for different different legal things um, and trusts and things like that. I might go to my attorney, but definitely, um, you know, pro professional organizer, you know, like Carol was saying and, and Pam and I were saying, you know, we do a lot of different things and, uh, you know, go to our websites. Um, in, in NAPO, um, our NAPO group, we, you know, we all do we specialize in certain things and we do uh, all different kinds of things. So check us all out and, you know, there's just different people that do different things, especially legal. And you can find all of us here in Austin at NAPOAustin.com. Okay. So you add the Austin after it. Okay. Yeah. N-A-P-O Austin.com. Perfect. Uh, Napo National, which is napo.net. Great. Uh, uh, in this day and time, I'm sorry. In this day and time, you guys, virtual bookkeepers and virtual personal assistants are available. Um, so any of us probably in Napo Austin could guide you to to one. Perfect. Right. Appreciate yeah. that. That's what I was trying to think of, and yeah, yeah. Uh, LifeWorks takes or did take furniture, home furnishings, decor to help set up people in transition. So that could be another place. Um, my trick with Goodwill and Salvation Army is I do not ask them to come pick up. I deliver. And if I deliver, then they take it all. If right. they come to your house, then they're like, eh, you know, they're super picky. So um, Afghan refugees are coming to Austin. Maybe they could use furniture. It might be called refuge 
Refugee Services of Austin. Yeah, yeah. So if you have anything right now, that would be a great idea. That's great. With their permission, I have donated certain pieces of furniture to high school or college drama departments. That's super cool. That's um, cool. I actually had um, a client who, well, she was an opera singer and she had a whole bunch of uh, dresses. And so we contacted a college and tried to donate some of them there. So it's really cool, you know, if you if you think outside the box about who would want the things That's and great. do it now, you know, if you're not wearing your opera dresses, why not you know, give them to some school and know that some kid is going to be wearing them. A fee only financial planner could help with trust and monitoring anything financial. Oh, somebody was just saying that. Um, I have donated old clothing, furniture to the drama department of colleges. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the program. You're also knowledgeable and helpful and entertaining. Thank you, Linda. That's <laughs> our goal is to be entertaining. Okay, I've got some other questions there on my phone. I'm really not doing emails. Okay, um, now I have to take off my glasses because it's super small. Are there any, are there others who would like to have a buddy system where we check in, hold each other's, oh, hands accountable to goals and help get each other back on track once we're behind in goals? Hmm. You know, let me, let me speak about that. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, we do, we have what's called, um, yes, <laughs> what's called a body double. And so what the body double is, is the anchor in the process. So I do that with my clients where I'm a body double. I also do coaching. Um, so I don't want to take away from Carol and Pam because I love them and they're the best also. Um, so body doubling, that's really helpful. Um, also in, you know, working and all, I'm, I believe all of us do this is, you know, we in after we're with the client physically, you know, we do ask, um, we do talk to our clients and set up a, um, you know, accountability process where I'm asking the clients, okay, this is what we worked on. And then I give them a, a period of time. And then what did you do? Did you, you know, take a picture or whatever, but you know, I'm not, um, I'm not bugging them. I'm not killing them off, you know, where I call it field work, you know, I don't even call it homework so that they, they don't feel so, so pressured. That's the problem in the beginning, you know, it's yeah. So that's that. So when you work with somebody like y'all, you coach people through it, you give them homework and then you do, you have accountability because you're following up and saying, right. hey, did you get that done? Why didn't you get it done? Then do you work with them on finding solutions for the reason why they didn't get it done? I'm sure you are. Yeah. Carol, what were you going to say? I just wanted to finish with, uh, since I love doing space design and I love comedy, there's a comedian named Stephen Wright who has a very deadpan way of delivering things. And he says, you can't have everything. Mm -hmm. Where would you put it? <laughs> With the deadpan look. Yes, 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 yes. I love it. Um, guys, we're getting close to the end of the webinar. I'd like to ask first our presenters, do you mind staying for a little bit longer to go through and answer the rest of these questions? And for other people, if y'all need to go, we totally understand. You can come back and you can uh, watch it on YouTube later, but we do have some more questions. So we're just going to continue on for those that have to go. Thank you for being here. Okay. So the next question is, um, oh, this is interesting. Carol. Can you add an example of what is and isn't perfectionism? Hmm. An example of perfectionism? Yes. Um, well, you know, uh, I don't mean to pick on the home edit, but there's a show called the home edit where <clears throat> they, they, it's very important to them to have everything in color order. So like they did a pantry one time where all the, all the cereal and dry food was lined up in color and they went out and bought a package of green cereal so that it would be a full rainbow of color in that pantry, even though that family probably doesn't like that green cereal. Mm -hmm. Sure, it looks perfect, I guess, but to me, that's not functional. Um, why have extra things that you're not gonna use just to make a color rainbow or 
anything like that that looks visually perfect to you, if it's not functional, then, you know, it's all about being functional. Um, does that answer that question? I love it. Thank you. Let me Appreciate jump in. Let me jump in there. Okay. Sure. Perfectionism is the fear of making the wrong decision. Okay. So it's fear and um, a person will get frozen and stuck because they, they are fearful of not being perfect. So that's perfectionism. So it's the opposite of what people think of making things look beautiful. It's actually fear. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got some more question and answer. Um, place to take lots of inherited jewelry to have appraised, assorted between costume and valuable then sell or donate uh, accordingly. So do you guys have any good people um, who are doing estate sales basically? You know, um, my jeweler um, sells, um, sells jewelry like that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, they do appraisals. They also will buy jewelry and sell um, heirloom jewelry. Where so, are they located or what's their I'm right here, right here in Lakeway, um, organic jewelers. And okay. they are, they're really great. Um, so they do that. Was that, was that part of the question? Yeah, no, that's it. Oh. Yeah. I think um, I had to have my ring um, appraised for insurance purposes. And I think I went to K jewelers and yeah super easy, you know, to do that. Um, but I don't think that they sell antique jewelry. So it probably would be better to go someplace, you know, that would sell that kind of jewelry. Um, okay. They don't see the shred day located on the website, Natalie, what day is the shred day? And it's, um, we it's under the calendar. Okay. Um, but it is on October 20th. Okay. Perfect. And it is at um, in the parking lot in front of Lakeway Aquatic Physical Therapy from 9 to 11 a.m. So for everybody who's working on their taxes, if they got an ex extension on their taxes, uh, for people who are cleaning out their house more because we're kind of stuck in with COVID, we thought that the shred day, that date would be a good time. Um, we're having some people who are asking how to get in contact with all three of you. If you don't mind right now, if you would just put it in the chat. And then Natalie, could you include all their information in the follow-up email too? But we'll put it yes, in the chat uh, for those people who are still on the call. We still do have some people um let's see we have this i have been the recipient of all my parents stuff love letters trip and travel info it doesn't pertain to me but but to them i have trouble letting go of this it's sort of historical yeah we talked about i think pam i think last time we had talked about maybe it wasn't you um where you could take pictures that are historical we talked about historical society uh what were some of the other places that pictures could be given to that the people oh, the, the library we were talking about the library or libraries yeah libraries i know i have um in helping seniors you know move out of their homes will find yearbooks and some of the yearbooks are really old um and this particular client they had passed and the kids didn't want the yearbook so I just contacted the high school and they were thrilled to get a, a yearbook from I think it was 1930 you know so it's fun I don't I, I don't want to throw away anything so I just kind of put everything kind of in a pile and then I work away at it um, in hopes that I'm not going to end up throwing it away. Um, but taking pictures of those things and then putting it in, in into a book could be a good idea. Pam, you're kind of the picture person. What else could that uh, family member do with her loved one's items? I think now that you guys, I think, covered it pretty well. Okay, great. Oh, and um, Carlisle, she says, Harrison Jewelry and Lakeway sells estate jewelry. Cool. They're great to work with and they also repair and restyle pieces. So that's great. Oh, so yeah. you have a piece that you want to restyle. Um, yeah, and they're right here in Lakeway too. And I think that's all the questions. Hey, Cindy. Yeah. Will there be a transcript of the questions in the chat? Um, we normally don't have a transcript script that we hand out. Um, we can save it and send it to you though, if you'd like to get it, oh, if that would be helpful. helpful. Yeah. Um, we'll just have Natalie, the person behind the curtain, do it for us. She does everything without Natalie. We're nothing. Thank you. Natalie. <laughs> we appreciate you.
Well, this was fabulous as I knew it would be. It's so fun to be back with friends again, talking about decluttering and getting organized. I always learn something new and we're so thankful to have you on. We will see you next year. We will invite you back. I hope that you all will come and we'll see everybody else next month for our seminar. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye.